Hello and welcome to MM Design. My name is Maria and today is going to be one of hopefully many videos about textiles diving a little bit deeper into fashion and to fashion industry and to the background to some things and today we're going to be talking about silk. Origin of it, history of it, you name it. Silk is not oldest but it's quite old. <laughs> the origin story of it goes to prehistoric times which means history wasn't written yet. The oldest evidence of silk made by silkworms have been found buried in 8,500 year old tombs in China. To learn more about your origins of silk, scientists investigated ruins dating back to 9,000 years at Zhuahu in the middle of the Hana province in the central China. The scientists collected soil samples from uh, the three tombs. Chemical analysis revealed evidence of silk proteins in two of these tombs, one of which dated back to about 8,500 years, okay? That's how long, like that's, that's how old silk creation is. As I mentioned, China was the first country to cultivate silk. Antiquarian book notes the legend where a wife of uh, Han Di, the mythological yellow emperor, uh, who kind of was thought to give art to the people. And his wife, like the person in question here, Xin Lin Shi, I'll probably butcher all the names here, so bear with me. She was the one to begin all the culture of silk and was kind of pronounced the goddess of a silkworm. I guess there could be worse things to be called than a queen of worms, but you know, that's, I don't know, I would like just ignore the worm part. From which Hong Di started creating clothing garments. So the tale goes that Shi Lin Shi was sitting under a beautiful tree, sipping her tea, maybe spilling it with her girlfriends, when a cocoon fell into her tea. Instead of freaking out like the rest of us, because you know, I guess she's a goddess and all, she just stared at it. And she noticed that because of the tea it started unraveling. And then she noticed that there's like a loose end and she grabbed it and started pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and it was like never-ending string. She even designed a wheel to unwind the cocoons. Hashtag boss babe. Let's talk about the actual cultivation. So the science behind silk is that moths lay eggs and then they these eggs become little worms that eat only mulberry leaves in order to become a moth, right? They make their own cocoon out of this silky material, just like a spider web kind of thing, but just around themselves. All of these need to be collected. And unfortunately, as you probably have guessed it, silk is not vegan. Um, it is animal product and, and somebody needs to die during the process. Unfortunately, pupa, aka the unhatched moth, is killed in the process of extracting the silk via boiling in order to maintain that long thread. Because when they hatch, they actually break all the fibers and you know, that's it. So, so sorry guys if you thought it was vegan. Not only is silk an animal product, there's actually, you know, death probably in thousands in one item of clothing. Now I feel really sad, but it's okay, they're just moths. Okay, I'm over it. This boiling loosens up the fibers and they begin to unravel. So a single cocoon is made up from one continuous string that reaches for about one kilometer. For people from a uh, places that don't know kilometers, I'll insert the conversion here. I'm not really good with other conversions. Okay. It takes about five to eight strings in order to make a very delicate single thread or about 48 strings to make a tougher thread. As I mentioned, uh, these worms eat only mulberry leaves. So for the entire industry, how much do we need of these mulberry leaves to like actually sustain silk things? So they kind of calculated they, they needed 6,260 square kilometers of orchard planted simply with mulberry 
trees. It's actually bigger, bigger than the country, Brunei, which is on 159th place by the size of the countries in the world, like out of 200, so it's pretty small. And about half the size of the Swaziland. Okay, so if we would take 30,000 silkworms, feed them a ton, a ton of mulberry leaves, and that will produce 12 pounds of raw silk. That's a lot of leaves, oh my goodness. Whew. If you're here for the first time, please consider to like this video and potentially subscribe to this channel. If you like the video by itself, why not? Okay, back to the history side of this. Beforehand, they tried to make clothing from the found cocoons around. It was assumed that in about 2700 BCE, the cultivation of sericulture begun. And in about 2600 BCE, uh, there was actually a written record of it somewhere. Somewhere. Weaving silk was considered a woman's job part of their feminine arts. So because silk was such a rare commodity and it was kind of mind blowing that you're wearing something and it's not scratching you <laughs> and it's comfortable, it's not straw. <laughs> and China was the only one producing it. It was a very sought over item from neighboring countries. This takes quite a long time. So, you know, China's working hard on there, they're perfecting their craft, they're really good at silk making, and in about 130 BCE, a silk road attaches to China. So now China has kind of a route to export their silk. So the silk road stretched all the way from China to Mediterranean, and with a few routes, maybe somewhere to to India, to some other countries that wanted to trade. There were also some sea routes, a part of this Silk Road. So it's not only walking, you know, you could swim there too. And eventually it reached Europe too. It was very rare for uh, traders to travel the whole entire route. Mostly they would travel back and forth from kind of major cities of trade and kind of pass their goods to somebody else or like trade goods. Silk was so sought after that it was even used as currency from time to time. And it was pretty expensive too, but it was about 20 times the cost of cotton. Well, silk was only a luxurious item that only rich could buy and wear. It was part of many Chinese people. They, the poor would make it to make money. So the Silk Road didn't really only have silk, you guys. Via Silk Road, many things were exchanged back and forth. China was exporter, of course, of silk, of jade, silver, iron, salt, textile, tea, tea is pretty important too, porcelain, and eventually opium. While countries from Mediterranean, uh, they had olives, oil, uh, honey, fruit, maybe some, you know, animals to trade, furs. India had lots of cotton to offer, East Africa had ivory, and Arabia had spices, tortoise shells, and let's just, I need to take a moment to say this correctly, incense. Okay, good. I didn't say something else. Okay. Whew. But the biggest trading thing that happened was not in physical goods, but in ideas, religion and disease. Disease such as measles, smallpox, bubonic plague traveled from east to west. And in a span of four years, half of Europe have died. But back in the day, nobody really connected the two dots. It's like, no, we're just, we're just happy we're wearing silk. It's okay that we're dying. So basically, this is the biggest fashion casualty, in my opinion. In about 140 BCE, knowledge of sericulture spread overland into India, where they started cultivating their own silkworms and producing their own silk. So the secret wasn't so secret anymore. By the second century CE, India was already shipping their own raw silk to Persia. Japan too shortly figured it out. Persia became the center of silk trade. Silk dyeing, weaving, developed as crafts in Syria, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. About in the years of 530 BCE, two Persian monks who lived in Asia were persuaded by their emperor back in Persia to steal 
some or maybe borrow i don't know how do they even get them to do that you know and bring back some of the silkworms from asia and then they did it they hid the silkworms in their bamboo staffs and brought them back how did they survive i have no idea they probably like walking away with a backpack of mulberry leaves like don't mind us have fun all the way back to constantinople Whew. that's a long ride in like a shaky bamboo stick by the 10th century the secret of cultivation reached southern spain by which time it wasn't a secret at all today silk makes up about 0.2% of all textiles sold in the entire world. Uh, China producing about 80% of that 0.2%. India about 10%, uh, then Uzbekistan, Thailand, and Brazil being the only non-Asian country that produces it. And it's on the fifth place, not bad. Silk is such a wonderful material that is very breathable, very absorbent, so it is very nice to feel and we can see how China won over the world with their silk creation. It was something new. Like even now, it's part of the luxurious wardrobe. Not everybody can. All right, you guys, this completes my, I wouldn't say it's a deep dive. It's a little bit like a little window that is open and we're looking at the past kind of situation. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. Hopefully I'll make more of this. Let me know down in the comments below if you're interested in finding out the history behind other textiles or maybe history of clothing maybe i think it will really help me as a content creation for fashion to understand this too so i can actually have a deeper conversation with you guys about fashion and i hope you guys are having a great day and yeah stay classy bye